Joining us now is Ojinika Ojiope with stories trending around the world. Hello, Jinix. Good morning, How Doctor. It was excellent. And you know that because I was hanging out with you. <laughs> Good morning, Ayo. How are you this morning? Good morning, Rufai. How are you this morning? Bless you, Oji. Perfect. Well, all right. Good morning to you, viewers. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. In Pakistan, at least 44 people were killed in a suicide bombing explosion at a political rally on Sunday. The blast occurred on the outskirts of Kaa, the capital of Banjul district, in the northwest region of the country. Nearly 200 people, including children, were also injured. The rally was organized by supporters of hardline cleric and political party leader Maulana Rayman, who leads a coalition government which united opposition parties against the then Prime Minister, Imran Khan. In Nigeria, the Economic Community of West African States announced a one-week ultimatum for coup plotters in Niger to hand over power to the democratically elected government. The decision was made following an extraordinary session of the ECOWAS member states on Sunday, presided over by the ECOWAS chair, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu in Abuja. Africa has come of age to reject coup and interruption constitutional order. Under sports, Noalia Benzina became the first player to wear a hijab during the Women's World Cup game when she wore the Muslim headscarf in Morocco's match in which they defeated South Korea 1-0 on Sunday. World governing body FIFA lifted its ban on footballers wearing the hijab nearly a decade ago after previous concerns over player safety giving way to the 25-year-old defender who plays her club football in Morocco to write her name in the history books. Then, Nigerian sports heroes of the 1976 Olympic Games and members of the 1980 African Cup of Nations were honored in an emotional ceremony over the weekend by the chairman of Air Peace Airlines, Alan Onyema, who decorated them as Air Peace Sports Diplomacy Ambassadors with free domestic tickets for life and one free international ticket yearly as well as 1.5 million naira each in cash rewards. The awards ceremony, which held at a co-hotel in Lagos, was preceded by the unveiling of the Sports Diplomacy Wall of Fame, with the names of the athletes boldly inscribed in gold at the Nigerian Institute of International Affairs, the Wall of Fame. Also donated by Air Peace Airlines, comes 47 years after the Nigerian team boycotted the 1976 Olympic Games in Montreal, Canada, in protest against the apartheid regime in South Africa. I'm so happy seeing the seeing these smiles on the faces of uh, national heroes that have been forgotten for so long. They've sacrificed a lot for their nation, so I felt that uh, it would be wise to, I mean, honor them in order to encourage the youths of today, knowing fully well that if they do good for the country someday, they'll be celebrated too. Finally, on our entertainment, Afrobeat star Wizkid over the weekend delivered an iconic performance at his sold-out More Love Less Ego concert at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium in London. The 33-year-old superstar treated fans inside the 63,000 capacity stadium with a mix of his stellar collection of songs. There were also music performances from the High Life Band, The Cavemen, and One Day Cold. Wizkid's performance at the Tottenham Stadium makes him the first African artist to headline a concert at London's largest stadium. One, two, three, six, eight, 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 eight. Well, let's begin what's trending. 
As the controversy surrounding some nominees that made up President Tinubu's ministerial list continues to rage, a coalition of Quranic reciters, memorizers, and learners has asked the Senate to reject the former governor of Kaduna State, Nasiru El Rufai, who was among the 28 names submitted to the Senate for screening and confirmation. The group said appointing El Rufai as a minister is repugnant to natural justice, equity, and good conscience. According to them, the former governor openly showed his hatred for Quranic students when he evacuated hundreds of students from Sheikh Dahiru Bauchi's residence with tear gas late at night in an effort to stop the learning and memorization of the Holy Quran. The group also appealed to President Bola Ahmed Tinubu to redraw El Rufai's name in the best interest of the country for peace and respect for the laws of the land. In the meantime, a video clip, which went viral over the weekend, showed the former governor of Kaduna State saying that he would not want to return as minister after his tenure as governor because, in his words, failure in governance is when you don't train those who can succeed you. <laughs> Rufai, last week it was Rike. <laughs> now we have El Rufai. Mm -hmm. I told you those were the two names. <laughs> but you know, in the same vein, a video showing President Bola Ahmed Tinubu appealing to El Rufai not to leave the country after his tenure as governor of Kaduna State. But to work with him instead made the rounds on social media. The president, who was then the flag bearer of the All Progressives Congress, spoke in October 2022 while addressing attendees of the Kaduna Investment Summit, which was held at the Umaru Musa Yaradwa Conference Hall in Kaduna. Their brother, Nasir, make a promise. We won't let you run away from the country. That's the only way I will leave this podium. Where is the promise? <laughs> you make the promise. I promise. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I promise, even on a part time basis. We say Rufai. I mean, it's nice that they came up with that video because you know that uh, uh, the video where he said, uh -uh, "If you do not train people to succeed you, you know then you are not doing your job." But here you can see that it appears that uh, Tinubu wants him to work for him. By all means, <laughs> Rufai. Okay. Hmm, last week it was wicked. Today is Mr. Rufai. Water, where water. We, where did we start from? A lot of water, water going on. Okay, so as regards the group that says uh, Rufai's name should not be added based on what he did yes, you know, to people studying, was... uh, they have a right of their grouse, and I think they should be able to sort that out, you know, as time goes on. And I respect anybody's right when they raise concerns, and I don't want to go into it because religious matters are quite very touchy, so I don't want to touch that. But as regards this, Malam Nasir Rufai made that plea. I mean, made that statement by saying that he believes in building the next generation. What I think is he should recommend people that will be the next generation that can serve the Bola Medzinubu. You forget that Malanasi Arifai became 
minister in 2003. He was in his 40s then. Prior to that time, he was in BPE. So you've served, based on the board of a government parastatal, you've served as a minister of FCT. And after he was, you've served as a governor. What else do you want? In a country that is looking forward, he has that. So that means in the last how many years, in the last about 20 years, he has constantly been in and around government. So what else do you want? Even, and that also goes to Mr. Wiki. We're looking at the future. We're looking at people that have quality that I can serve. I'm not saying he doesn't have his own qualities, but you have served. You just finished serving as a governor of a state. It isn't, isn't it time for you to put on the baton for the next generation? You didn't just only finish serving. Your son is also in the House of Reps. So is it only the El Rufai family that would serve Nigeria? Are there no other families? Your son just took a juicy position in the House of Rep. You are still coming back as a minister? Are there no other people that have very good capacity that will serve? And why this recycling of former governors? And yes. you look and we are saying, want to hit the ground running, it's a new dawn. It's a new dawn for Mr. El Rufa that had, we had seen him serve as a minister. Definitely not. Or Mr. No. Wike. No. And these are the things a lot of people have. Not to take away from the ministerial list. There, there are some people out there. But even with the technocrats that are on the list, there are people mm. that have made arguments. Okay, take for instance, people like Professor Party. Somebody gave me a very good argument. I'm a man for argument, very good argument. He said, okay, Mr. Pati has served as Minister of State before for health. That can't, is it that we can't, you know, have other people? So, obviously, if he's coming back now, you know he's going to be in the capacity of, because he has a very good, and he's internationally recognized in terms of public health. He's the chief of Gavi. He has to resign from Gavi and all of that. And, mm. So, but when you look at it, is it that we don't have other people? All right. So those That's are the fine. questions that concern people are raising. Dr. Bati, the first story talked about this group of Quranic you know, leaders saying that uh, Tinubu should not um, or should reject uh, El Rufai because he appears to be um, you know, doing things that are against the laws of the land, not letting people practice their religion and all of that. Well, people will express all kinds of sentiments depending on what view of the, of the matter, you know, they see. Uh, this same Nasir El Rufai, uh, you recall Shehu Sani uh, said that uh, El Rufai is a serpent and that uh, Tinubu should not uh, give him a job. I thought Shehu Sani was probably imagining that serpent that swallowed the uh, notes in jump or whatever. <laughs> I was wondering how, why, why you will come uh, forward and say, oh, the man is a serpent. We know that he's a human being yeah. and that he has most recently been uh, governor, except he says he's using it in a metaphorical sense. Now you have another group saying, oh, uh, he doesn't like uh, 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 Quranic scholars. This is the same uh, Nasir Rufai that people have uh, you know, accused of supporting Muslim, Muslim uh, ticket. ticket yeah. uh, that was a big issue it for was. some people. And he came out later and said it was misinterpreted. Now, some of his own uh, Muslim brothers are now saying he's not promoting religion. But in any case, these appointments are not based on religious relationships. They're based on the prerogative of the president, his powers to hire and fire. There will be more of this. There will be some people who will still come out and say, oh, this person that is uh, being nominated as a minister does not have NYSE certificate. All kinds of things are bound to come up. But what Nigerians want is a quality team. The unfortunate thing that some people have pointed out is that, oh, not too many people stand out in this list. I've heard that view ex expressed. Some people are saying, oh, they are recycling people. But let me give the example of Ethiopia. There are some countries whereby you could have a man serving as minister for 15, 20 years. Even if government changes, they will not remove the person. The person will be asked to stay there for purposes of continuity, for purposes of experience. But in Nigeria, the counter argument will be, oh, we have over 200 million people. Why should it be only these people? Yes. Well, whatever the choice of the, of the uh, president is his choice. But what we expect is good governance. Because you can have experience and be useless. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, sometimes some people, they will say, they say, oh, because I'm older than you, I'm smarter than you. Mm -hmm. That is not true. We've seen that clearly. Right. So it's possible that fresh blood with the right credentials uh, could do 
uh, much better. But we'll see. If anybody thinks that, uh, you know, Nasir Rufai will reject the appointment, I don't think so. <laughs> no, because In fact, he, he was video. the first person yeah. that the president nominated and offered a ministerial appointment. Yes. And he promised he's going to keep that promise <laughs> and take the job. He has to come back to say and that. And it's not just about age. <laughs> right. If they offer some people who are over 80 years old, Okay. Appointment. Ah, ah. <laughs> they will jump okay. at it. Doctor, so is this is not ah, Nigeria. Ah, ah, I, know, I know some eighty-year-olds that no, are no, in power now. They, they, no. We've had the cabinet no, of the no, class no, before. Shot fired. <laughs> Jesus Christ. No, we've had. I, 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 well, well, I know. I know yes, of an eighty-year-old who is in yes, power. Yes, age is um, not a factor of competence. I think some people bring to bear experiences. Yes. I think the unique thing about this is the Nigerian is the Nigerian context. Yeah. What a number of people have said, especially you know, analysts, uh, views from people following the announcement of the ministers, is that as a nation, people wanted a moving away from the old, mm -hmm. something fresh, something new. And looking at the list, the nominated list, it doesn't reflect that. Now, moving back to uh, Mr. Um, former Governor El Rufai himself, is that you know the video came out? People said talking about it, and then he released it. Well, his camp must have released yeah. the counter video, and that's instructive. The truth is that if you look at politicians all around the world, there are people who are career politicians. President Joe Biden of the United States started his career in 1979. In the in the 70s, if you look at the British system and those who go on to take on um, ministerial portfolios, they also have built a career. Some some of them straight from um, university. However, it doesn't justify it because. They go there based on the fact that they are able to do the work. And so we ought to have conversations around competence, but also particularly because of where we are as a nation, a moving away and the fact that even he himself admitted it. When will the mentees who have been tutored, who have been trained by the current um, um, politicians today take office? When will the youth emerge? We keep talking about the youth coming on board. We keep talking about fresh young minds. And then we keep having the same recycled um, minds. Now, if the work that had been done previously has turned Nigeria into this golden state of, you know, amazing, amazingness, then we wouldn't be having come. We'll be happy to continue with the old. Mm. So the conversation is not just about the fact that we're recycling the old or the fact that they've been in politics or in government for so long. It's the fact that we want something different to achieve something different. They say you cannot do the same thing again and again and, 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 and expect something different. Well said, Ayo. Um, our next topic, you all have discussed it at length. I'd like to take some reactions. So we'll head over to Niger now, where citizens have been reacting to sanctions imposed on the country by various organizations following the ousting of President Mohamed Bazoum by the military. On Sunday, members of the ECOWAS Authority of Heads of State and Government, led by President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, issued a seven-day ultimatum to the Nigerian military to restore constitutional order and reinstate Bazoum. The bloc also imposed land and border closures, suspending all commercial flights between Niger and ECOWAS member states. In the event the authorities' demands are not met within one week, take all measures necessary to restore constitutional order in the Republic of Niger. Such measures may include the use of force. To this effect, the chiefs, the chiefs of defense staff of ECOWAS are to meet immediately. In the meantime, the following measures are to be applied with immediate effect. One, closure of land and air borders between ECOWAS countries and Niger. Two, institution of ECOWAS no-fly zone on all commercial flights to and from Niger. Suspension of all commercial and financial transactions between ECOWAS member states and Niger. Freeze all service transactions, including energy transactions. Well, over the weekend, videos showing pockets of violence began circulating on social media. Citizens were seen attacking politicians in Niger Republic, supporters of the military takeover, who took to the streets in their thousands, also gathered outside the French embassy in Niamey, the capital of Niger, to condemn the action taken by France against the military junta. <laughs> Oh! 
Allah gani na ka gabda huta yanzu haka Well, so many reactions trailing the ousting of Bazoom. I'll take uh, one tweet from Emmanuel who wrote, uh, um, West Africa and African leaders should thread carefully with the issue in Niger, simply to avoid it being another territory for proxy war between the West versus Russia. The opportunity is there. Well, Jessica wrote, democracy in Africa means corruption oppression, insecurity, and poverty. Politicians are being given license to share resources, opportunity, and funds between themselves. Dividends of democracy is a scam language because there is none. I guess, uh, you know, Jessica is responding to all the comments that are being made as to why this whole, uh, in, uh, you know, military takeover occurred. But also, we'll have to talk about the story, and I would like to bring it back to Nigeria, the story in Adamawa State, where there, is, there was breakdown of law and order. I mean, Adamawa State is one of the most peaceful states in Nigeria, and to see that that happened, where these people carted away with food, we don't know the reason, but the governor has imposed a 24-hour curfew. All of these, we need some sort of peace among the West African region, and this has to do with good governance, you, really. Jessica. Just as a parting shot on Niger, I thought that was a country President uh, Wari said he could relocate to if you disturb him too much in Nigeria. <laughs> so, unfortunately, he can't, he can't think of that now. Well, that's all I have for you on What's Trending today. I'll see you all tomorrow.